And by the end of the lecture, the last 10 minutes are going to be devoted to, to uh, the, the exam. I already graded the exam, so I'm going to pass the exam grade, and I'm going to discuss some of the, of the questions. So in terms of the grade for the exam, um, the average was 84. So um, I think you guys did very good. Um, the standard deviation was 8, 8 point something. So it was it was good. Okay, so that that's good news. So let's let's go over the lecture notes, and after that we will talk about the exam. So so far we we have discussed two main topics. First one was the introduction to project management, and we we talk about field how that compares to. Uh, other type of managers, and so on. And we also talk about how to manage conflicts and project selection methods, and, and so on. Um, this lecture in particular goes now in terms of uh, how to plan the project. So we're going to start discussing how you should approach this task of planning a project, and this will involve multiple things. Um, we're going to learn how to schedule a project, and for that, we're going to uh, use the project, uh, Microsoft project, to uh, kind of plan the, the project using the computer tool. But that, that will be next after this lecture. So let's start focusing on what are the tools that are available for you to, to plan a project. So in terms of the objective for this class, we, we already covered some of these objectives, in particular, we we went over, uh, we had discussed some of these project management body of knowledge concepts in class. We also understand the applications, issues, and current development in project management. Today, we're going to learn how to develop statement of works as a means of defining the outcomes of a project. And we, so far, we also use Excel uh, models to to enable effective decision making, in particular for selecting projects using the net present value. So we are going um, over these objectives in, in, in the course. But today's uh, agenda basically focuses on these three areas. Um, the contents of a project plan, uh, which is also called a project charter, and what is a statement of work and how you define a statement of work and how you work on, on this thing, and the planning process, which involves this uh, work breakdown structure. So the objective for the learning objective for this lecture is for you to list some of the components of the statement of work, uh, for you to develop a simple work breakdown structure, understand the nine key elements of the project plan, and learn and understand the work breakdown structure. So let's start with the project plan, what is also called the project charter. And basically, the this is the document that is going to authorize the project manager to um, initiate and lead the project. So initiate and lead the project. Um, this is a written document containing the contract terms. Between the sponsor and the project manager. And provides the background. The objective. And the general boundaries. for the project. Okay, so this is basically telling you step by step the important things about the project. Ensures that uh, scope and expected outcomes are understood by both parties. And this is a very concise document. Shouldn't have more than five to six pages. Okay. 
So the important thing about this document is once this document is ready, everyone involved in the project is going to sign this uh, document and that will give you the green light to start working on the project. So the serve, again the project charter will serve the project manager as a map from project start to finish. It's credible to both the planners and management. And one important thing about this document it facilitates effective communication. So again, everything that you have in as a written document is like uh, I will always say this and reinforce this every time that I am um, working on a project. You want to keep everything in a written document. So if you need to refer back to the discussion or if you need to refer back to the instructions, everyone knows what needs to be done because it's written. Okay, so facilitates uh, effective communication. Um, includes the business case. Or the organizational, organization expected financial benefits, and the strategic reasons for the project. So again, um, here are some of the components of the project charter. So you have the scope, the objective, the measurements. Um, how are you going to measure the progress of the project? The assumptions, so if you need to make some assumptions, this contract will be valid only if this happened, or if I can get the information that I need from the part, and so on. Um, and the project manager authority, so this document will be signed by all the people, including the project manager. So why do this? Uh, like to do this document in particular. Why, why is this important? Uh, this forces uh, discipline thought on front end, forces good communication so there will be no surprises especially for the customer, uh, provides guidance for the team selection and structure, eliminates false starts and frustration, and defines the end point of the project. So this basically is telling the customer the project will give you uh, this deliverable, or this is the, the goal of the project, everything outside that is not included. So what are some of the questions that this document will answer? What are we supposed to do and by when? So we, we will have a specific target and we will know when that target is due. Um, what are the resources that are required? How are we supposed to do it? What are the, the steps? Um, do we need to bring someone outside the company to help us in one of those steps? Uh, why is it worth my time? Is this going to give me any benefit at the end? Who cares? It manage, especially management, top management, this top management involved in this project, is it important for them? Uh, what led up to this project? Is this a continuation of, of an effort of the company? How do we know if we have succeeded? So how do we know that the project is uh, providing the, the benefit that we intended with the project? So we need to have some measurements for that. So on the next slide, basically, we have the multiple elements requiring the project 
plan. Um, again, these are not written in stone, so if you research some sources, you will see that uh, they will list some, some of them differently. But in general, these are the, the general categories. Um, so we have the, the overview, which basically gives you a brief description of the project. So here's where you state the, the summary of the project. This project is intended to do this. This is required because the company is facing these type of issues. So we think that we performing this project, we're going to improve the customer satisfaction by this percent. So that's the overview of the project. Then um, the objectives. So here you state what are the specific goals. So this project will do this, this project will do that. And then we have the general approach. So how are you going to work in this project so you can achieve these goals? So the general approach include the technological and managerial approaches. We also need to include the contract aspects, so the agreements with the client, the schedules, the timeline for this project, and the milestones. So when we talk about milestones, we're basically saying we know the project is going to take two years, but by the first six months, we need to have this part completed. So that will be our first milestone. By the end of the eight months, we're going to have this part completed. So that will be our second milestone, and so on, until you complete the project. Um, resource requirements and estimates. of project expenses personnel the details of the project workforce the risk management so if we have um, um, uncertainty that can um, affect the project at some point. For example, if we know that there's a, there's uncertainty on some of the prices for the for the parts that we need to complete this project, or for the technology that we need to complete this project, so that should be also part of the uh, project charter and the evaluation method. So. We want to make sure that we satisfy the customer requirement, so we need to have some type of measurement to to prove uh, our improvement. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go over some of this in in detail. So we're going to start with the with the objectives. So in the objectives, we want to have a, a detailed description of the project scope, uh, the deliverables, and outcomes. So the objectives must be brief when describing an objective. Avoid technical jargon or acronyms. Uh, this is important because if you are presenting this to top management or managers, some of them will not have the same background that you have if you present a lot of uh, technical uh, terminology. Uh, they can uh, basically not understand what you're trying to say. So try to avoid the technical jargon. Uh, make the objectives uh, confirmable. Be sure that all parties agree on the objectives and create smart objectives. 
So one of these days uh, tomorrow. Objective. Um, have you heard about this before? Smart objectives. So I posted a, a document today or yesterday with the lecture notes that basically tell you or describe how to write objectives using this um, methodology. So SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Attainable, or Achievable, Relevant, and Time-bound. So when you write an objective, you want to make sure that you cover these areas. Okay? So when we say specific, what exactly are we going to do uh, and for whom? So this objective will do this and will be done for this uh, company. Can we measure the, doc, the the objective? Can we say, okay, we're going to improve the production of this manufacturing line and we're going to be able to produce 50% more uh, product? Um, attainable. Can we get it done in the proposed time frame with the resource and support that we have available? Relevant, will this objective have an effect on the desired goal or strategy? And time bound, when will this objective be accomplished? So in this uh, document, we have basically a template that can help you develop some objectives. So you can use this template to, for example, say the time. By this time, what you're going to do from, uh, in terms of the measurement, so we're going to take, for example, uh, by next year, uh, we're going to improve the production of shoes of this manufacturing plant. We're going to take it from the current uh, production to a 10% increase. So that's a very... Uh, specific objective. Okay, so these are good tools to have, good documents to have available uh, for your career in the future. Another document that I posted is this template for a project charter. So these are the, the steps that we are trying to cover right now. So it will allow you to, to create this project charter for, for a specific project. And the template is very good because it states all the areas that you need to cover. It also gives you a good description of what you need to put in each one of those uh, part of the project uh, charter. So again, very good, very good documents to keep for your reference in the future. Maybe you can use this for your... Uh, custom project if you're doing an internship and you need to submit an application or if you are working with a company during the summer and they ask you to to come up with a plan for a specific project that you are involved these are good things to have okay um, so those documents are now um, on track let's go back to to this so the objectives again create SMART objectives. And you also have here the general approach. So this will include the technolo technological approaches. Managerial Approaches, type of project. Just a quick comment. I remember when I was a student, I was sitting just like you right now, and 
Remember faculty members or professors telling me, oh, you should save this for the future, or you should keep this textbook for your reference in the future. And I mean, uh, when I was a student, the only thing that I did with books was just to use them and sell it, and then buy the other one for next semester. I understand. But um, sometimes it's, it's useful. When you, you go outside and you start working, you start kind of remembering what you learn. But you need like a reference to go back and try to understand what what was exactly what you learned. Having these things uh, close to you and organized uh, could be very helpful. So I'm just talking about my my personal experience. So just keep that in mind. Um, in terms of objectives, these are more examples. So uh, we have a statement for a project. This is uh, the goal, create a revised report that summarizes monthly sales activities. So um, we want to create some objectives for, for this uh, project. So the first thing you can do is to create some type of measurements for, for the objectives that you want to, to address. So we can have uh, measures of content, schedule, or time, budget, and approvals. So for example, in terms of content, um, so we're trying to create a revised report for these uh, monthly sales. So the report must include data for each product line. So this would be an objective and specifically this data. Um, in terms of the timeline of the schedule, uh, the report must be operational by this date. In terms of the budget, uh, developing this tool should not exceed this amount of dollars. And in terms of approvals, uh, the, the report must be approved by these uh, four areas. Okay, so that's give you another uh, idea of how to create these objectives. So you have some type of measurement. Um, you can actually combine these objectives to make a uh, just one. So you can say uh, the report must include this, needs to be ready by this time, must not exceed this amount of dollars, and we'll will be approved by this person. Now let's talk about the contractual aspect. So this would include agreements with the clients. Uh, reporting requirements so in some of these projects you might have your client telling you okay I want to be up to date with your progress so I want you to submit a report including these areas every three months so that could be part of the of the contract um, Technical specifications. Of the leader bubbles. So if the company wants you to use a specific software or if the company, let's say you want to create a new tool you see in C++, but they don't, they don't have programmers that will give maintenance to that. Or their programmers are not familiar with C++, they're more familiar with Java, then you might need to consider developing that tool using Java instead. Um, agreement on the delivery dates. that kind of explain by itself, incentives for performance, and exceeding contractual requirements. 
this um, this one specifically might apply mostly to construction. So if you are able, for example, if you are working on a project for a apartment complex and you are able, let's say your plan was to have the, the building ready by next year and you're able to have the buildings ready six months before, then that will give the, the manager of the complex some extra income because they will be able to rent those apartments before. So you might have an incentive for performance based on, on delivering that project beforehand. Um, penalties for non-compliance. So this is basically the opposite. So if the client is expecting the project to be due next year or to be ready next year and you take more time, then you're going to be penalized. So you're going to have to cover uh, those extra expenses for the client. Um, procedures. For making changes in the deliverables. So basically this one is more um, to cover your progress. So if you want to, you can give the, the client the opportunity to make changes to the objective of the project or the deliverables. But at some point, you might not be able to change a part of the project. So, for example, you can tell them, if you want to adjust the particular goal, you need to let me know before this date. Because after that date, I would not be able to make changes. And if you do want to make those changes, this is the, the money that you're going to have to pay. Because that will involve extra uh, resources and extra time. Okay, so you might need to list these procedures for making those changes. Um, finally, project review dates and procedures. So, going back to to construction, you can um, have an inspector coming every three months to check on the progress of, of the, the building itself. Any questions? So these are the contractual aspects. Very general description of the contractual aspect of the project. Now in terms of the of the schedule, we're going to talk about the work breakdown structure in detail. W. But again, this includes the, the timeline of the schedules and the milestones. So you're going to be telling the customer by this date, we're going to have this part ready. Then after eight months, we're going to have this part ready. And by the end of the next year, we're going to have the, the project completed. In terms of the resource requirements, you need to estimate the, the project expenses, the capital and operating uh, expenses, um, the cost associated with each task, the overhead and fixed charges, and the cost of monitoring and cost of control procedures. So all those things need to be considered in this document. In terms of personnel, you need to detail, provide the details of the project workforce. So as we did in the case study, you were basically deciding which team member or which person will be the best fit for your project. 
you need to provide those details. If you need a special skill requirement. So in the case study, we're looking at uh, people with knowledge in uh, Six Sigma, so black males or green males. Uh, you need to specify if you need to have any training for these people. So if you, for example, are going to work on a new area of the company that not a lot of people have uh, experience. So in my case, when I was working for Johnson & Johnson, they brought a new machine to produce uh, some of the catalysts for Tylenol. So this was called the uh, Rocker. So they have this huge machine, um, and they were basically having all a combination of procedures happening in this same machine. So none of us were familiar with the process, so we needed to basically get trained on how to operate that uh, particular machine and also how to perform uh, or how, how to guide the employees to perform the right uh, maintenance and so on. So training could be also very important. Um, and also the time facing of all personal requirements. So there's some of the things that we need to consider where we're writing the, the portion of the personnel. In terms of risk management, list of major and minor disasters that might happen. Um, so the best thing to come up with this list is to to ask someone with experience in the company. So if you're starting as a new engineer and you are in charge of this project, you might not know about all the things that can happen within the company that can affect your project. So a good idea would be to talk to a person with experience, maybe a person within the, the area that you know be working in the company for, for multiple years and it could give you better better understanding of some of the things that can happen that can uh, delay your project. Um, then you need to come up with the probability of occurrence. and a contingency plan. So if this does happen, then what are going to be your remedies or what are the things that you're going to do to, to bring the project back to, to schedule? Then finally, we have the project evaluation methods. So you're going to have some project evaluation procedures. And some, some of them will involve quality standards. So how many of you have taken the course in quality control? Okay, so you'll be more familiar with this. So there'll be some, some policy standards that you might need to, to satisfy for 
sample a product um, that can involve dimensions, that could involve uh, health compliance, and so on. So you may need to make sure that the evaluation methods also involve that. Um, so next I have an example. Again, for these project character things, you might find um, that they might cover all the nine areas that we described. Some of them are going to be in, in some, some of the areas, not all of them. So here I have an example for, for the construction of a high-quality custom home. Um, five months at not cost to exceed this, this amount. So as you can see, this is a very, very clear, very good, well-defined objective. You're involving the cost, you're involving the, the time, the schedule, and you also are stating very clearly what you need to do. So that's very important when you're writing a, a, an objective. Uh, in terms of the deliverables, you have what is stated here, the dimension, uh, the house needs to have the garage insulated, uh, the kitchen appliance to include, in high efficiency gas furnace with uh, with a programmable thermostat. And now, as I was explaining, the milestones are very clear. So you have some dates, and by those dates, you need to have some certain part of the project completed. So for by March 5th, you need to have the permits approved. Um, March 14, foundation. Um, March 25, drywall framing, and so on, and by June 7, the final expansion, inspection. And then we have some uh, requirements, technical requirements, and the limits and exclusion of the contract, and then you have the customer approval and review. So this is a very uh, good example, um, very s s brief, but uh, very good. So now I want to give you a, a chance to, I don't know, think and uh, work on this uh, example by your, on your own. So try to answer these questions. Try to create a mini project charter for your current semester at Texas State University. So you can answer these five questions on your own. What would be a good name for your project? So what are you trying to do this semester? Are you trying just to complete one semester just to go uh, uh, finally graduate at some point? Um, who is your sponsor? Uh, what is your objective for being here at Texas State? What do you expect to do here to meet your objectives? And what do you expect others to do for you? So I'll give you just two minutes to try to answer those questions and using the, the information that provided you, see how can you apply those to your own personal um, situation. And this, if you read through it, you, you start thinking, oh, this looks very easy. There's no challenge. But once you start trying to come up with the, the right things to do or the right things to put in each one of these areas, you still realize that it's not straightforward.
Okay, so time's up. Uh, anyone like to share at least these two? Those are the ones that are, are more interesting to me. <laughs> so, more interesting for me. So, what is your objective for being here this semester at Texas State? What's your objective? Can you come up with a start type of objective for smart, I'm sorry, smart type of objective for this? To graduate. Okay, so to graduate, you need to add more, more details. So maybe time to graduate by this semester in do you have any other performance, like GPA, for instance? So I want to graduate by this semester with the GPA and with a job. So that's, now you can see how the objective is changed. Yes. I mean, would that only be for your project if you were to graduate in the end of this semester? Yeah, that's right. So if you were graduating, because the exercise was for just this semester, but at some point it will take you to, to that final goal. Okay? So you see you went for from graduating to want to graduate by this semester, want to uh, have this GPA, and I want to have a job offer. That will be your objective. So once you start stating these objectives, everything becomes more clear. And then you know how what you need to do to work and to get to that goal. Okay? So good exercise. Um, hopefully it will give you some um, understanding of what we are trying to do. Um, okay. Any questions up to this point? Let's talk about the statement of work. And the, these two documents are very similar somehow. The, the, the goals of the two documents, the party charter and the statement of work is, is the same. It's basically trying to organize your, your project somehow. Um, so the statement of work is a narrative description of products and services to be delivered by the project. So for internal projects, these are projects that are coming within the same company. Um, the project initiator provides the statement of work based on the business needs, product, or service requirement. Now, this is a project that is coming from the outside the statement of work can be received from the customer as part of the bid of the uh, of the project itself. It's part of the bid document. So two different areas: internal project person within the company is providing uh, the details. External project, the customer can provide you with those details. Um, in terms of the document itself, it will have three major areas. Uh, will include the introduction and background, uh, the objectives, and the scope of work. So, three major areas, these three areas, the more summarized document. So, in the introduction and background, it references the original agreement containing the legal terms and conditions. Um, the objectives provides a well-defined statement of the results to be achieved in order to the, for the work to be accomplished. And then also identifies quantified or quantifiable criteria that must 
be met for the work to be acceptable and accepted. So this objective will, will basically follow what we discussed already. And the scope of work, it's briefly what the scope of work does. Cover. Includes an outline of the extent of work, a brief overview of the steps of the project, a brief description of the methodology used, a description of the location of the work or where the work will be performed, and also a price breakdown. So if you compare this document with the project charter, um, you'll see that it will cover the top two areas of the project charter. So this is a more summarized type of document. Okay, so I'm stopping here. Now let's talk about the, the exam. So we'll continue next week with the with this lecture. And we're gonna talk about the planning process. In next week you will also have your next case study, which is related to this uh, material. So you'll have a, your case study on Tuesday. Um, any questions up to this point? So let's talk about the, the exam. As I mentioned, the... Chris was good.